Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped, and welcome to my COVID-19 daily vlog, uploading a new video every evening at 6 p.m. to keep you sane during lockdown. Well, it's time for another Peddler's Rides. So far, we have had 20 episodes of Peddler's Rides, and every single car that has starred in them so far has had one thing in common. Yes, an internal combustion engine. But not this evening, oh no. I think we should call this one Sparky Saturday. Well, yes, before we get going, obviously over my shoulder there is the petrol pup. Now she's had a run with Mrs. Petrolped and a walk and a bath. And that has totally wiped her out now. She will probably sleep there for the next few hours. But let's kick off this video in the normal fashion with a couple of peddlers pups, shall we? So first off, from Chris Thwaites, we have Dexter the Black Lab. What a handsome chap you are, sir. That's Dexter, not Chris, by the way. Um, and then Andy Simpson sent us in this lovely picture of Desi the Puggle. Now, the, I find it highly amusing nowadays when you have crossbreeds, two different breeds of dog, and we've got all these really cool names. I mean, I have a friend of mine who has a bulldog cross Shih Tzu. Yes, well, okay, anyway, on to the cars. So the first car on this episode has been sent in by Carmen Clark. Now, Carmen used to be a Mini owner and has recently gone down the path of a BMW i3. Now, I am very intrigued by these cars, so I shall hand over to you, Carmen. Hi, peddlers. I'd like to introduce you to my BMW i3 S. So I was a Mini Cooper owner and I was interested in electric cars for quite a while, ever since pretty much the Mini E was announced over a year ago. And I've done a lot of research into them, I'm quite a te techie geek and I really like the idea of them. The simplicity of the motor, there's not so many moving parts, there's not so much maintenance on them, the instant power and the instant torque that you get from them, it was all very interesting. Unfortunately for me, the Mini just didn't quite have the range I wanted. I wanted to be able to get to my parents without having to stop and the Mini wouldn't do that. But the BMW i3, the newer versions have a larger battery. This isn't a newer version, this is an older version, but this has the same size battery as um, the Mini, but it has a range extender on it. And the range extender is a little petrol scooter motor that's located under the boot floor, underneath um, there, with the along with the electric motor. And this gives you extra battery power, should you need it. It doesn't drive the, the wheels at all. Coming from the Mini, it's a very different experience to drive. It's... Uh, fast off the mark, very, very, very fast off the mark, especially in sport mode. You feel that thrust into the back straight away. I liken it to driving a silent jet engine. It's like taking off in a jumbo. So one of the things about the BMW i3 was that it was designed from the ground up to be a city car. And one of those things is that it has a very tight turning circle, partly because the wheels aren't constricted by having an engine under the bonnet. As you can see, there's nothing really there. It's just a little fruit or frunk or whatever you want to call it, with a few bits in, your um, washer fluid, brake fluid, and that's pretty much it. There's not really anything else that you need to service on them. So the position of driving you're very much higher up than in a Mini, obviously. The Mini's quite low anyway. Um, it's great for visibility. Those weird looking dropped back windows actually help a lot on the visibility. You can see what's down beside you very easily looking through those side windows. And it's excellent in the city because of that turning circle, etc. So one of the other things about the i3 which was specifically designed was that the car needed to be lightweight to counteract the extra weight of the batteries. A lot of electric cars are very heavy, but the i3 is extremely lightweight and this is because of the carbon fibre chassis. Like the i8, the whole frame is made of carbon fibre reinforced plastic and the underpinnings are aluminium. So not only is it very strong and very lightweight, it won't rust. So despite having a little bit of extra size, it's taller, it's longer, and having the Rex motor and the batteries, this car is actually lighter than my three-door Mini Cooper was. But there's no B-pillar in the interior, and this is because it's not needed for integrity of the structure due to the carbon fibre. So the back doors open backwards, which means there's great access into the back seats, and the front seats also go forwards a bit like a three-door car. However, you have to open the front door and take your seatbelt off before the back doors will open. So there's pros and cons to that. So this is the out exterior of mine. I actually think it's a nice looking car. I may have people who say it's a horrible looking car. It is certainly Marmite. 
As an i3S, yes, mine has the extra wheel arc benders because it has a wider track. It also has bigger wheels. Mine has the S Plus pack, so it has the um, dark tinted back windows and the black um, 20 inch wheels. So, what's it like to drive? Well, it's very different to the Mini, and it's also my first rear wheel drive car, so I had to get used to that as well. At first, it feels very tall and a little bit unwieldy but actually when you get used to it you can, it handles very well and the reason for this is because all that weight is very very low down so once you learn you can trust it in the corners and it's not going to topple over it does actually feel really good and I was just starting to get used to it as the S model it does handle better than the standard i3 and I was finding I could chuck it into corners quite nicely so this is a view of the interior it's the half leather half wool lodge interior and I have the funky eye blue um, seat belts, which are pretty cool, although I'm not sure they go entirely with the interior, but what the hell. It has an iDrive controller, like standard BMW, and this lovely floating screen, and it, mine has the eucalyptus wood dash veneer. The whole cabin is very zen-like and relaxing. My peddler's puss, George, absolutely loves it. Every time I open the car, he's in there straight away. I never had that with my Mini. I'm going to have to be careful, I don't take him on a journey one day inadvertently. So I hope this intro is explained something as to why I love this weird looking car so much. I'm still getting used to it, but I've just liked everything about it so far. So thank you for taking the time to watch. Wow. Now, honestly, and I'm not just saying this, first of all, I thought it was a brilliant video, brilliant edit, but YouTube needs more female car reviewers. The motor industry needs more female car reviewers. Your video was brilliant. It is so good to get a female perspective and it's great. <laughs> so 90% of my viewership is male, only 10% female. It is brilliant. One of the upsides of doing the COVID-19 series, I seem to have grown in my female following, but a brilliant, brilliant video. And yes, I, I, I I think the i3 is one of those cars, I agree with the looks, they are very Marmite, but I think they're funky. Um, but the edit was fantastic. Obviously you have George the Cat, so you have a, you know, a, a, a animal companion on your channel. They're good, aren't they? Yeah. Told you, she's asleep. Um, but yeah, I honestly think, and you've bought an NHS sticker as well from SNPS 2012. Brilliant, brilliant video. Um, and yeah, very, very interesting car. And I think it's a shame that the i3 is now no longer available with the range extender. I know there's a bigger battery pack that gives you more range, so BMW argue you don't need it anymore, but very interesting car. Uh, next up, we're off to Mal, Mal Wayne, and he has a Tesla, a Tesla Model 3. What's Mal up to now? Whoopee! Hi, everybody. Welcome to the walkthrough of my Model 3 car. A little bit of background, I bought the Model 3 uh, back in August. I ordered it two years ago, had to put a thousand down, and I have to say, it's the best car I could ever have wanted or have. And I'm gonna show it to you now. I've added a few more refinements than what it originally came with, so I'm gonna explain everything to you, but what a brilliant car. So this is the all range, long range Model 3. Um, I get about 300 miles out of it um, and it cost me probably about eight pounds to charge it a week. My van was costing me 70 pounds for the same amount of miles. Um, so I've added this onto it. I've tinted the windows and I've um, added the roof bars, the Tesla roof bars. I've added a little you know, mirror there. Um, very exciting because yesterday we got a, an update on the car and the car keeps giving updates and it was so good that now you can have sentry mode which is all these cameras which is a camera here a camera here um, camera at the back and also camera here and a camera here and what they do is if someone comes around the car it would give you a, a problem. Um, you'd actually see it on your car, but then you'd have to take the memory stick out and take it in. But yesterday, now you can have the memory stick in the car and you can see everything from the screen, which I'll give you a little demonstration soon. So on the front of the car, I've motorized it. 
Um, originally, you used to have to press the button down when you closed it. Um, so let's see if I can show this for you. Okay, so this is the front. And as you see, it's quite, quite good. Um, it's quite a distance. He's got a couple of um, little holders for uh, shopping. And also on the boot, I did exactly the same thing. Um, using the Tesla's button, I powered it. So that powers it. The boot's quite, quite a big boot. Um, 15 cubics, I've chucked a load of stuff in it at the moment. Um, but no problem. I put a little bus in here. And that takes care of the whole outside of the car. Now to get in the car, you can either with the phone, it'll open by itself like that, and the, the mirrors will actually undo. And Tesla give you a key card. But I've got a Tesla ring here. And what that means is that I can touch it and the car will lock. So I don't have to worry when I'm leaving the car that I'm going to have a problem. That normally you'd walk away from the car and if the car detected you out of range, it would then close. But then someone could run in the car. With this, they can't. So, and I can get in it. So now let's take you inside. Oh. So here we have, it does everything. The last update, we would say, uh, here we go, open glove box. And then the glove box would open. You can't um, close it <laughs> by a motor, you close it by yourself. Then you'd say, um, fold mirrors. So then it would fold the mirrors. And you would say, unfold mirrors. And then they unfold the mirrors. So you can do everything with voice, so that's great. If we um, take that picture off for the minute, and then you can say, show backup camera. So while you're driving, you can see that. But the new thing, which is great, you press this button here, and what that does is, let me do it again. There it is, launch viewer. And now what will happen is all the sentry modes, you can see around the car. Back, front, you couldn't do that before. So this is, is just a new addition. And it's fantastic because then you can look at all the clippings of what's gone on and you can pull up anything you want and look and see what's been going on with the car so that's really a great addition very pleased with that you can now see road cones it can now see traffic lights um, which is brilliant because it, it can the next update is going to be to stop at traffic lights so that's really good it is a great car and anybody that sees them and wants to buy them. They are the best cars really, um, best car I've had. And then if we look into the charge um, here, it gives you the charge. So I've got 260 miles at the moment, um, which is about 90% uh, charge. So if I took up to 100, it would give me 300 and something, but I, know, I don't never normally keep it up to that. It's best on Tesla, suggest is that. So everything, it has Netflix on here built in. That was another update. You get all the movies, sound system. You got all of my music I can have in there. I think I've got about 300,000 tracks of music of my own personal collection that I've had over the many years. So that's all inside and you can control that by voice and absolutely the best car ever. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough of my car. One thing I didn't tell you and I'm really proud of is I didn't like the one thing I hated it had a wood dash here and I absolutely hated it ever since I got it I was like oh if anybody asked me what the one thing I hated it was that and I got this from Evernex in the States and it's a carbon fiber um, cover that is stuck on with 3M tape. It's very strong, you can't pull it off, but if you wanted to pull it off, you could, and you'd be back to it. But I think it looks beautiful now. It's made a big difference. Why on earth they didn't use it in the first place? It was the only bit that had a wood dash on this bit, and it just looked awful. And I was glad to get rid of it, I have to say. <laughs>
but now it's as you see beautiful for, as far as i see it thanks now i am a big tesla fan i the first electric car i ever drove was a tesla uh, a model s with ludicrous mode um, the four-wheel drive it was a p90d with ludicrous mode just simply blew me away i then drove a p100d model x amazing car and i was actually due to have a model 3 press car from tesla the week lockdown started and unfortunately it had to be pushed back because i'm very interested in the model y now the model y will share much of what the model 3 has but it's a hatchback which is great if you've got one of those but a brilliant video mal thank you for showing us everything now i must say um the, there are so many things you could talk about Tesla that I think are really interesting. The fact that the car is connected and does over-the-air updates, and if you talk to any Tesla owner, the thing they love is they'll wake up one morning, go down to the car, and it will have a function on it that wasn't there the day before because it's been upgraded over the air. Um, and I could, I reckon you could play inside a Tesla with all the gimmicks on that um, uh, touch screen. You could be in there for hours and hours. <laughs> so yeah, I thought it was a brilliant video and a very, very interesting car. And hopefully there will be a Model 3 coming to the channel very, very soon. Um, and obviously I'm a big electric fan because my TV show that airs on the 24th of June is called Vintage Voltage, where we basically take classic cars and convert them to electric power. So um, I, even though my channel is called Petrol Ped, I am a big fan of EVs. Um, and if you haven't done so already, make sure you tune into the Love Cars video I did with Tiffany Dell and Paul from Love Cars. Again, uh, earlier on in this year, it was only a couple of weeks before lockdown actually, um, based around second-hand uh, electric vehicles and buying them. And an, an i3 was one of the cars we actually had in that film. But anyway, guys, I, I hope you enjoyed that, mixing it up a little bit. I know when you do EV films, uh, they either go down really, really well or not. Uh, luckily, we didn't broach the subject of charging too much, which is normally where people give me grief. But I hope you enjoyed that one. If you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film, guys. But you take care. Stay safe.